Good morning and welcome to worship at Ocean View Presbyterian Church on the second Sunday of Advent. Our announcements can be found in the bulletin, which is available on our website, but we'd like to bring a few more to your attention. As you are now aware, we are taking a break from our in-person worship and returning to our virtual platform for all worship and church activities until further notice. If you have not yet received a letter in the mail, it should arrive shortly and will answer any questions you may have. If you still have questions, please reach out to Pastor Terry or a member of session. On a side note from the communications group, we realize that we've been having some audio issues uh, in the last week or so, and please be sure that we are working diligently on correcting that. The 10th Annual Nativity Festival is now underway, although it's in a bit of a different format than we're used to. Please visit this remarkable celebration of gift to our community on YouTube. A link to the program is on the homepage of our website. If you have not yet received a copy of our Advent devotional, please copy or contact the office to arrange to either pick up a copy or have one mailed to you. You can also download and print a copy from our website yourself. Our Advent time of prayer service will be held on Thursday from our sanctuary, beginning at 6 o'clock. The theme this year is hope. Each service will include prayers of intercession, a short homily, and a time for personal meditation and prayer. Zoom information can be found on our church calendar, and a reminder email will be sent prior to the service. Our deacons would like to thank you all for your generosity in November in support of the Southern Delaware Education Foundation. Because of you, $1,065 was raised. This month is Christmas Joy Offering, a Presbyterian tradition since the 1930s. Please see your bulletin or our website for more information. We also remind you of the Christmas collection for the way home. This annual mission provides basic necessities for those leaving prison so they can start life anew. Please see our website and be on the lookout for a separate email with all the details. Please keep all of those on our prayer list close to your hearts and in your prayers. And if you are in need of someone to talk to or to pray with, please contact Pastor Terry, a deacon, member of session, or our Stephen ministers. Let us now prepare to worship God. Please pray our silent meditation with me. Holy God, we long for your peace and trust in your promise. We hear your call to turn toward you, to change our lives and welcome you back in. Meet us here and fill our minds with your wisdom and our hearts with your peace, that our worship together may open us to the challenge of your dream of wholeness for all. In the name of the one who's coming, we pray. Amen. Amen. God, we are confident in your coming, bringing a world where all will be made right. Calm our anxiety, strengthen our patience, and keep our hope aflame. We walk towards and wait for your new day. Amen.
Please now rise in body or spirit and join in the call to worship as found in your bulletin. We welcome to worship the God of forgiveness who pardoned all our sins. We come to worship the God who sent a messenger saying, Prepare the way of the Lord. Let us listen to God, what God has to say. A voice that speaks of peace. Peace for the faithful, for those whose hearts are turned towards God. Faithfulness will spring up to the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. Let us worship our God. Please be seated. And we'll continue with a reflection on our common humanity. God is not slow about God's promises. No, not at all. But God is patient when we are not ready for things to be made new. Come like a thief. Everything will change at once. Earth and heaven dissolving before our eyes. We wait for a new heaven and earth. Yes, but must it be like this? If that's how it's going to be, shouldn't we focus on what we can manage? Shouldn't we do what we can do? What sort of people we will be? Holy and godly people. This is what we can control. God, help us to imagine all you envision for our world. And help us imagine ourselves in it. Help us to imagine even ourselves spotless, without blemish. Give us wisdom and courage to be prepared for your day, to welcome it, to be God is patient. Understand God's patience as salvation. God speaks peace. All will be well. God's enduring love and kindness. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which lies ahead, we may travel the path of your promise, which brings eternal joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Old Testament reading today is from Isaiah. Now Israel has been in captivity and suffering, and they have just been all uh, treated badly under the Assyrians and the Babylonians and all those people. And so they're praying to God for some kind of relief or sign. And here Isaiah encourages them. Comfort, oh, comfort my people, says our God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every valley and hill be made low. 
The uneven ground shall be dug level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I say, What shall I cry? All the people are like grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are like the grass. The grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Get up, get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother's sheep. The Gospel lesson is taken from Mark. <laughs> now Mark chapter 1 and the other uh, Gospels as well references Isaiah, what we just have, uh, read. And the prophet reaffirms the sending of one, John the Baptist, to prepare the way. Of course, the way is Jesus. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside, all the people of Jerusalem, were going out to him and were baptized in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts with wild honey. Now he proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy even to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Bob and Kathy. Uh, that was a decision just made during the week, so those two that you just watched were highly adaptable for our sake. And I do, myself, genuinely appreciate it. <laughs> so, people, get ready. And by the way, I'll say here, because I'll forget at the other end of this sermon, yes, that's a song title. That is a song by the Impressions in 1966, written by the great Curtis Mayfield. And it is your song of the week. And if you happen to like Rod Stewart and Jeff Beck, they did a very creditable cover of that song 20 years later in 1986, also recommended by somebody who does like both those people. So, the self-creation of God as a human being, through human beings, using human processes, is an amazing development. It's really a second Eden. Yet Mark doesn't even spend time on that because he wants to urgently get to 
Jesus' mission. Matthew and Luke thought it worth our while, important enough to give the background to cover it and tell the Christmas story. John, on the other hand, thought the only vital background was Jesus' presence at the very beginning, at the moment of creation and his activity in it, already for very different Gospels. Regardless, this beginning is just as important on God's plane for us human beings as that first beginning. But, as Mark says in his Gospel, where everything happens suddenly and immediately, and by the way, the Greek word is euthos, and it begins so many of Mark's sentences and stories, this beginning is confusing rather than orderly, chaotic rather than austere, because it happens in the midst of humanity, in human ways, including success and failure. In other words, it includes what we like to call the fall. We need to remember that all Jesus did, even in the Johannine calendar, which adds a whole nother year to the three years of the other Gospels, all of that takes place in less time than a single presidential term. In a world that did not have modern travel, modern communication, or modern technology, it is confusing. And it is hard to wrap the mind around, hard to discern the connections and the, above all, through lines of God's purpose. It was deeply confusing, and in fact, especially in Mark, the disciples themselves, who were, by the way, with Jesus all the time and received special teaching, even they couldn't get it, couldn't wrap their minds around it, couldn't see except for the occasional brief flash of insight, like the transfiguration. Oh, oh, is that who that is? They couldn't see what Jesus was pointing out and pointing toward. I think it's fair to say that it wasn't until the first Christian Pentecost, which we recall from the book of Acts in the end of the first chapter, it wasn't until then that the wider group of Jesus' followers and God-fearers began to realize that something very important and something very different was truly happening. And it became more and more important to understand how it began and just who Jesus was. Thus, the Gospels and this one marks brief but most powerful statement. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. This is a beginning just like the other famous in the beginning. God, etc. This is, in many ways, a second creation account. He could have said the beginning of the new heaven and earth, and he wouldn't have been far wrong. The whole gospel is this beginning. This might as well, instead of the gospel of Mark, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ might as well be the title of this gospel, this explanation of what happened, this unstoppable reassertion of the kingdom of God as the health of our planet. Mark reached back, yes, to Isaiah, but also to Malachi and to the psalmists, to say this is true. The health of the planet and the health of the Anoim, the poor people of the earth, the poor and overlooked who lose the game of aggression because they are not aggressive but cooperative, this is the beginning for them. These were not on the minds of the Assyrians who conquered most of Judea at the time Isaiah writes of here with savagery and exile as methods of enforcement. They were not on the minds of the Ptolemaic Greeks or the Imperial Romans who were the later conquerors, nor of the Egyptians or Sumerians and Persians who were the habitual assailants of Israel. They were not thinking about the poor. But these people and this planet 
were exactly who were on the mind of God. We find ourselves, when we align ourselves with whatever claimant says they bring peace while wielding the sword, or claims they bring prosperity while seizing up property and wealth, we find ourselves at last when we believe any pretender to God's majesty, honor, and power claims to bring anything but chaos or disease that we are deceived. Yet we do the same thing over and over, following the ones who make these promises. Alliance with God, you see, won't make us, we modern versions of the Anawin, won't make us rich or powerful. No, it will just make us aligned with God, with God's shalom, with the breathing in and out of God's creation. And if you ask me, that's better than fleeting things. It's good to be reminded that in a world plagued by greed, deceit, and every variety of sin, that living toward God can seem counterintuitive, unproductive, and even countercultural but it is life and health for us. And Jesus urges us to seize it quickly. Take it now to seek the Lord while he may be found. And that is the feeling in the Gospel of Mark. So, about John. John comes from the other side of the Jordan. And John urged the people to come to the Jordan. And the people surely remembered that the last time they crossed the Jordan, they walked across on dry land. Because God stopped the flow of the Jordan for all of Israel to come across. They built the altar on the side by, um, no, I can't remember the name of the town. Start with a G. It'll come to me at some point. Gilgal. They built the altar at Gilgal. And they were thankful, their second dry crossing. But ever since then, Israel, we, Israel's descendants, have failed. And so John's message is basically, you're going to taste what it's like to be in the Jordan. You're going to understand about sin and death and chaos, because I'm going to drop you into it. And of course, I'm going to rescue you from it. That's the understanding we have in our Christian service of baptism. Jesus goes down with us into death. We come back up with Jesus out of death. And maybe, as some people, I'm one of them, believe, maybe it's better. Maybe it was meant that we need to understand what it is to be without God in order to truly love and value God. That we've gone through all this because it would have been so simple, but would have lacked a whole lot of depth for our formation. And God forms us and continues to form us if we didn't understand what it meant. So John drops all these wanderers into the water and pulls them back out, saying, this crossing was harder, but God still has you. God's still with you. This is your beginning. The Gospels seek to tell what it looks like and how it feels to be around Jesus. Much of the experience is deeply surprising and highly challenging and counterintuitive, as I said, and yes, it's difficult. It's not a walk in the park. It's not a prayer and you're done. It's going through this fallen world, remembering it's not meant to be that way. Others have gone before us, and they've told us all this, as well as telling us there is nothing else worthwhile in the face of the life with Jesus. The life in Christ demands the constant disruption of being raised from the ordinary, of finding what we often call God moments, raised to a higher level of attention that promotes acts of love and acts of service. Thus, confusion 
really belongs in the life of a Christian. Thanks be to God. And so, as I said before, people, get ready. Amen. Amen. Will you please stand and join me in our affirmation of faith? God holds this world in sovereign love. God kept God's promise, sending Jesus into the world. He poured out his spirit and broadcast his news that sinners who repent and believe in him can live and breathe and move again as members of the family of God. We rejoice in the goodness of God, renounce the works of darkness, and dedicate ourselves to holy living. As covenant partners, called to faithful obedience, and set free for joyful praise, we offer our hearts and our lives to do God's work in God's world. With tempered impatience, eager to see injustice ended, we expect the day of the Lord. And we are confident that the light that shines in the present darkness will fill the earth when Christ appears. Come, Lord Jesus, our world belongs to you. Amen. And by the way, that is taken from our world belongs to God. Please be seated. And we will come to our time of prayer. And I have a couple to raise, which I will find amidst this confusion of paper that I always create. First of all, uh, on a very, well, mostly entirely pleasant note, I would like to raise up Bob and Elaine Jackson. I had a lovely letter from Bob, who is the communicator for Bob and Elaine now. As you know, they are out in New Holland, Pennsylvania, in um, a large adult facility. Um, they're doing well there. They enjoy worship there. But as always, Bob writes, this is the place. And how much he loves this place and loves you all and loves all the communication he receives from here. And he talked about where they are in life. And he said something remarkable. He said, we know these things and we are okay with them. Please hold Bob and Elaine in your prayers. They are wonderful people and very loving people indeed. Uh, from Janelle Starling, who is leading Union Wesleyan, um, her granddaughter, Jasmine Starling, who is in high school, plays basketball and plays in the school band, has now suffered not just one but two concussions in the course of her basketball activity. And she is having a very hard time. She has to go to AI DuPont every second week. It's not clear at all that she'll be able to go to college next year. So we ask you please to hold her in your prayers. I ask for prayers for Susan, the wife of a reporter who stopped by, meet me at the manger yesterday. She's going to have surgery for a shoulder replacement. And finally, well, no, not quite finally. I want to say um, I also spoke to my dear friend Jeff Archer just yesterday, and I want you to continue to hold him and Sandy in your prayers as well. Just a lot of things happening that don't feel good or, or right, and they just need our prayer. I want to acknowledge that this one comes from Kathy Rhodes. This is a prayer for Legatha Davis. This is a baby who was born on Thanksgiving Day, and she was born with meningitis. So enormous, enormous challenges. Please hold. On an uplifting note, at least for those of us who love music, um, today would be the 100th anniversary of the birth of Dave Brubeck. I've mentioned his name maybe once or twice before because he's the musician in my life I have seen and loved the very most. An example of both creativity and deep humility and deep humanity 
that should inspire us all and that we should amplify in our life of prayer. And so now, having said all that, are there further prayers? Don or Bob, we don't see any. Well, Kathy, yes. Yeah, I, of joy for uh, Cindy Benjamin's cousin, Tom, uh -huh. who has uh, had successful treatment in his eye and he's at home. He had that radio action. Yes. So he's, that was successful. He's at home. So. We have been praying for Dom Getman, and apparently this surgery was a successful surgery and he has gone home despite the cancer that was in his eye. Um, I'm also going to raise in prayer possibly without her permission uh, Liz Hobler who I will be taking to BB tomorrow for a catheterization to examine what the heck is going on with her. Please pray for her and for Bruce. Let us pray. Faithful God, as we make ourselves ready for you, we continue to need you in every moment of our lives. We continue to need you in every moment of the lives of our friends and loved ones, our acquaintances. And we all, we, this little humanity crowded on this planet looking up at the sky, we all need you. We need you to come and be with us, having forgiven us, having redeemed us, having reclaimed us, and beginning the work of the renewal of your earth. We need you in every small task and every large task, in all the ways we help each other, in all the ways that those with particular knowledge, and in this day especially epidemiologists and those who develop vaccines, help us. We need you. We need you to help us focus on our common lot and not our individual lot. We need you to help us focus on raising all people up and not merely some. We need you to help us focus on being united as you envisioned us, working together in the stewardship of this your world. We need you to guide every step we take, every thought of our mind, every whim of our heart. Please be behind them, making them right making them holy, making them righteous. We also need you to heal those whom we have named and those whom we have held in our hearts. We need your right purposes and your right will and above all your love to enter them and be with them and all those who care for them. We ask you for simple things, for your love, for your grace, for your mercy, for your pardon, and for your ongoing partnership with us in this whole creative act of being human. Do not abandon us. Look on the works of your hands with deep, deep love and guide us towards you. We pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us his own prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, as we prepare and then give our gifts, we proclaim you not only Lord of our lives, but Lord of our future. We declare that future is real, even as we have not yet seen or understood it. I will now call for the offering.
Lord, receive these gifts with our confidence that all we do, all we offer, all we say, and all we hope will take root in this world for the sake of your love and your promises. May your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And please use these gifts in the power of your Son, Jesus. Amen. And just before Bob charges you, I want to say I've been looking for this whole time at the backs of Mary and Joseph, this small crutch in front of us. And I just want to remind people who are our guests, it is possible for you to find the Nativity Festival on our website, ovpc.org, or on our YouTube channel, just look for ovpc.org on the YouTube channel. It is too good to miss. And friends of OVPC, share it on your Facebook pages by all means. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> May the God of peace make you holy, and the power of the Spirit sustain you until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, friends, I entrust you to God and to the message of God's grace, a message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance with all who are sanctified. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and every day. Amen. <laughs>